What's up witches? My name is Syzygy and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then I'm happy to see you and I thank you for stopping by. Today I'm going to do a video that I've been wanting to do ever since I first started my channel and that's the classic looking through my old art type of video. There are many videos that I've seen over the years that have inspired me to do this, most notably Jaden Animation's video and Kelsey Animated's video. Especially Kelsey Animated. Her videos looking through her old sketchbooks are really funny and interesting, and I definitely recommend them if you're a fan of these sorts of videos and haven't already seen them. Now, just to get this out of the way, I was a traditional artist back in my heyday. Heavy quotations on heyday. All the way up until December of 2020 when I bought my drawing tablet, I drew on mixed media paper with my Tombow markers. Despite having sunk my toes into the world of digital art as a youngin' a few times, it never really stuck until I had a tablet of my own, because I was essentially drawing with a mouse, and drawing with a mouse is absolute donkey. I pray for anyone that has to do that. So you may be thinking that I'm going to whip out a fancy video camera and provide you with some live reactions and footage to my old art that I've saved, but oh no no. Not only do I not have a video camera, very sad I know, I also have none of these pieces of art anymore. You see, as a kid, I was pretty ashamed of a lot of my work, especially when they grew outdated and I began to see the more glaring flaws in them. Therefore, I already threw all of the artwork that I am showing in this video away years ago. Not only that, but at the time, I deleted all of my old art, or at least most of it anyway, off of sites that I used to use to upload them, most notably DeviantArt. Therefore, even though I will be mentioning three comics that I attempted to make as a kid, I'm only going to be able to show you one, and we'll get to that as we move through the video and it comes up. Just you wait. So, how did I manage to uncover all of these old artworks if they're all thrown away by now? Well, actually, by digging through some real old DMs. You see, I had this friend like five years ago that I spent years sending my art to, so I essentially spent hours upon hours looking through thousands of images on Discord to find all of the old art that I'm going to share today. Let all of this work be a lesson to all of you young artists to keep your work. Don't be a big dumb booty butt like myself and destroy or delete all of your old work. I know that seeing flaws in your art can be hard, and the urge to delete is pretty strong if you don't like it, but if you keep it, you'll be able to see how far you've come with your work one day. You'll be able to look through all your old stuff, maybe cringe a bit, maybe unlock some old memories, or hell, maybe you'll even find yourself making a vi YouTube video about your old cringe one day. Save your art PSA over, moving on. So, I can't find most of my art from early 2017, unfortunately. I was an intense Undertale fan from like early 2016 to early 2018, and I made my accounts and started posting in early 2017, and I can't really find much of the art that I made during that time. However, I did manage to uncover a few, so Undertale art incoming, pray for me. So, first, we've got this Reaper Sans picture that honestly haunts me to this very day. The posing was super ambitious, and tiny idiot me definitely did not know how to pull it off correctly. Notice how poorly drawn the blue flames and chains are? And honestly, props to you if you even recognize that they were supposed to be flames before I said that. And that's not even mentioning how the face is so... Ugh. Apparently, even Tiny Me realized how nasty that last thing was, so I redrew Reaper a little while after this and like, man, it's loads better. But you can still see the issues. It is so painfully obvious that I used the burn tool and didn't know how to effectively make different areas of the piece glow because you can clearly see that I just took a blue pen and essentially scribbled all over everything. Also, the raw edginess that exudes from this piece is just cursed within itself. Like, I don't even think Reaper was that edgy of a character, but then again, I may be wrong. It's been years, so I can't really remember anything about him for the life of me. Next we have... Oh dear god save me. This absolute monstrosity. I just want you all to know that I did not remember I had made this until going through the message history with the person I mentioned, so it must have been so traumatic that I blocked this thing out of my memory entirely. And yes, this is Blueberry Sans dressed up as Mako Mankanshoku. You are not seeing this wrong. All jokes aside, can we talk about how my daft younger self was so concerned that people wouldn't realize that the katakana at the top said hallelujah to the point in which I added the English translation above? A beautiful thing, really. Next we have this very simple and yet still very garbage drawing of Chara. And yes, I say Chara, do not come for me in the comments. 
Gotta love how I desperately tried to do something a little bit more labor intensive with the lighting and yet I could still not even be bothered to use a ruler to get the window upright and symmetrical. I also want to point out that this was a screenshot I took on my old tablet that I did not bother to fix and crop then and will still not fix or crop now. Now we get into the last remnants of underfail that I could find. You may be asking, underfail? What's underfail? Well, you see, underfail was, ironically, a failed comic that I made when I was a kid. I completed one full chapter of it before I gave up and scrapped it, and yes, it was called Underfail before I deleted it and threw the pages away. These are the last two images that I managed to find of the comic pages. This ancient relic here is a relatively early page of the comic and serves as a really good example as to why y'all shouldn't shade with black. This image depicting two pages was from a lot later in the comic, I believe the very beginning of chapter two, also serves as a little bit of a message to artists as well. Framing, panel flow, and pacing. Don't do any of what I did here and your comic will automatically look better. That's not even scratching the surface of the near unreadable text like damn my chicken scratch was illegible. Here is an image that I actually found of my child self destroying the comic with a small knife, which is pretty funny I guess. Uh, I don't even really remember what sparked the emotional outburst that caused this, it just sort of happened. I got a knife and cut up the comic because I was mad. And that is what the cover looked like. Very cursed indeed. This bus shot of Chara showcases the exact reason as to why you should always draw guidelines and use references before just freehanding. Also, as you may have noticed, having seen Chara in several other pieces already, Youngmi had a real agenda when drawing them. I always drew them with breasts because I didn't realize non-binary people existed, I guess? Not only that, but they were like 10 or 11 in my universe, which is how I generally drew them, so it's definitely weird regardless. Why was I like this? I honestly don't have much to say about this one because it's definitely less of an assault on the senses than the others. However, I do just want to point out that fresh hella thick though. Now finally, we get to my magnum opuses when it comes to my Undertale art. Starting with the less good one, this was one of the first pieces of art I spent as many as six hours on. It was a piece that I worked really hard on at the time and even though the perspective is wonky and I still didn't know how to use a ruler to save my life, it's definitely pretty crazy that I made this when I was barely 13. On paper, no less. Now we get to this piece of art that still sticks with me as one of my favorites from when I still shaded with black. Ew. It's a piece that I weirdly still like despite its faults. The worst thing about it, to this day, is that the background, despite being pretty neat, is distracting from the main piece and also, ew, may I just point out the fucking kanji in the middle that is so mangled and poorly written I cannot read it? Have it be a lesson, my children. Do not use Japanese characters in your work when you do not speak Japanese and cannot properly write in kanji, hiragana, or katakana. Thank you. Now, that's pretty much all of the Undertale stuff out of the way, at least the stuff worth sharing, so my familiars were going to get into stuff I drew of my OCs and miscellaneous other things. Dear lordy, there are a lot. Starting things off strong with this entity. So this was made around the time when it was funny to dog on Donald Trump. I actually drew this for a friend that I'll just call M for the sake of this video, and they essentially said that they wanted a trump carrot stepping on a poor Mexican bean. Now this creation was actually so well liked by my peers at the time that I printed multiple copies of it and sold them to like five other people at the time, so there was that. Honestly, it still holds up in 2022, my beloved. I just wanted to say that I found this in the bowels of the old messages and the motion blur on this image sent my soul flying straight out of my body at top speeds. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, the theme of motion blur continues throughout the images. Very sorry about that. Apparently, younger me was having a stroke every time I took a picture with my Samsung tablet. Great. With that being said, let's move on to this absolute blast from the past. So, you see, these are both drawings of a character named Gravity that I created when I was like 9 or 10, I believe. The version of her on the left, or what you would call a cat girl, ugh is the only image that I have of her design before it was changed to the one on the right. Essentially, she was this sort of alien cat girl thing who wielded a scythe and was a cannibal. Very edgy, I know. I was one of those kids. She also had a brother named Galaxy, but I haven't seen any trace of him in years, so I can't really showcase him here. I actually redesigned Gravy again a couple years ago, and her current design just looks like a <laughs> rejected has-been hotel design, so there's that. <laughs> Oh gods, and here's the part of the video where we discuss my past freeness. Oh no. 
So, in middle school, 7th grade to be exact, I had a relationship with this person who I'll call B. Now, our relationship was incredibly toxic at the time and in my case a bit traumatic, so I'm not going to delve into any further details. The reason why I bring it up is because, boop, it relates to this monstrosity. You see, B was a furry and insisted that I make a fursona and a bunch of furry characters, despite me not being a furry at the time, or even now for that matter, so I created this really poorly designed fursona to appease them. Here is this first draft that I obviously smeared the color on. Here is what would be my DeviantArt PFP at the time. Notice the presence of my pentacle. The pentacle was even a part of Syzygy's design at one point, but you can see that I kind of scrapped it because it was really annoying to draw. Yes, that is the reason. Lovely. Now, finally, these are two that I drew of my fursona and their fursona at the time. All around, very cursed. My design skills and color choices were upsetting all across the board. Here are a few really old and terrible concept design drawings of Billy. Billy is a character that I still have to this day, but before her design and character were updated, she was a super edgy hoe called Tauretta. Yeah, you heard that right. Tauretta. Ah uh, yes, young me. Make it very obvious that you don't speak Japanese while still pretending that you do. Now, this one I really wanted to share because I actually mentioned it in a previous video. So yeah, I actually found this thing in my old DMs, believe it or not. So I'm glad I'll be able to finally show you this old art project that I made. So as you can see, it was honestly pretty garbo. The composition is boring as all hell, and you can tell that the paper Mr. T gave me to draw on completely f***ed up my bright green marker. Marvelous. My favorite. Not to mention that that thing there is, if you couldn't tell, which is totally understandable, mind you, that is a rose. <laughs> and the sad thing is that, years later, I'm still not great at drawing roses. Yeah! This mildly comical drawing of Baltimore from the hit game Baldi's Basics in Education and Learning, aka my favorite game ever made. Now, remember when I said at the beginning of the video that at least one of my comics was still readable to this day? Well, that comic is actually called The Syphilis Series, and this drawing here is how I will introduce you to the concept. Now, these characters here are actually not the characters from the comic. Instead, the row of poorly drawn minimalist dinosaurs at the top of the page are, and the human characters are pretty much like just human versions or gujinkas, I think they're technically called. This comic was created by me and a friend, that friend being M, who was was the same person that requested the trump carrot. We created it 7th grade year of middle school, which was like late 2017 and early 2018. For all of you non-Americans with different school systems, I was 13, almost 14. Now, I still actually have the physical comic for this, but there are like 30 pages of it, and I don't want to take up all of your time by reading the whole thing here. Here is a video of me flipping through it relatively quickly, all filmed on my shitty Samsung Galaxy. You're welcome. Now to summarize the comic as quickly and as barebones as possible. So it was a surrealist comedy with an actual sort of plot. So the general synopsis was that big boy Lucifer the Brachiosaurus, also nicknamed Ferd, runs into STDs the Stegosaurus at the Pew train station and the two strike up a friendship when they realize that they both ran from their respective problems. They both decide to rent a place together and find themselves living in vodka velociraptors totally reliable apartments. And the rest of the comic mostly centers around their wacky run-ins with their drunk landlord, Ferd's shifty boss Mr. Jazz, and their crazy Karen of a neighbor, Tracy Pterodactyl. Now, you may have noticed that Tracy's name has been changed to Tracy from something else, and because it was written on this paper and is now censored, starting with a T, you can probably guess what her name was before I changed it. So you see, when I was a youngin, it was kind of like a big trend, a really bad trend may I just say, to make fun of SJWs online and to blast them. At the time, I did not actually realize that the T slur was, well, a slur, though that really isn't an excuse for me using it. I was probably... I... What do you mean probably? I was quite transphobic as a kid. Less out of malice and hate, and more out of insensitivity and ignorance, but still transphobic and inexcusable regardless. I realized the mistake years ago, thank gods, and her name was changed to Tracy sometime back in 2019, I believe. Her character slowly changed from SJW crazy woman to cishet conservative Karen, which is kind of ironic if you think about it. Just one end of the spectrum to another. But yeah, I actually still have this comic in its original 2018 draft, and if you all want a video of me actually reading it and showing you the whole thing in detail, please leave a comment. I would kind of love to ramble about that for a while if I'm being honest, it's crazy. 
Now, my familiars, we're going to dive deep into a comic that I created, or rather wanted to create when I was a middle schooler. This is the exact same year that the aforementioned syphilis series was spawned, and the same year that my ex was encouraging me to make furry characters, hence the characters that you will see all being furries. Now, I want to stress that the following section discussing Sever, which is what the comic is named, will contain images of gore and slight not safe for work. Of course, everything will be censored because this is a YouTube video, but if you're sensitive to blood and intestines, I would encourage you to skip to this timestamp. Of course, nothing is really well drawn, so it's not really graphic, but just in case. Alright, with that being said, let's dive deep into the references for these characters. Now, the main protagonist here was Kaseki Shishoki, who is a character that I actually first designed as a human in some gore art in late 2017. I essentially just drew this edgy picture of her cutting her own eye out with medical scissors and decided to repurpose her basic character design and turn her into a furry, at the suggestion of my ex of course. Now as you may have noticed, I was a huge weeb as a kid and all of the following characters were designed with the idea of them being Japanese initially. Except I didn't speak Japanese at the time and I am still not entirely versed in the language at all. I know the basics, but nothing beyond that. Therefore, the naming scheme and the kanji I used in the names may be incorrect or translate oddly. If any of you in the audience are bilingual and fluent in Japanese and English, I would really love a full breakdown and roast on how bad my Japanese was. Obviously, no pressure to do so, but like, if you want to, I would love to see. With that being said, back to Kasaki. Basically, she was a character with like the most basic backstory ever. She had this younger sister, who you'll see in a moment, and her parents basically just hated her and treated her poorly while pampering her younger sister. I don't really think that there was ever a justified reason for the maltreatment. You can just tell I was a big brain writer. She and her sister never had a rivalry at all. In fact, Kazaki loved her sister much more than she loved her parents. However, her mom was a heavy alcoholic and ended up accidentally killing the sister when she was seven, and then blamed the whole thing on Kazaki, who subsequently ended up in a mental hospital with shady practices just after she turned 13, if I remember correctly. I mean, Kazaki did have schizophrenia, but also it was mostly just false imprisonment, if that's the correct term. I don't even know if- I don't even think schizophrenia actually develops that early. <laughs> anyway, so that was the basic plot synopsis for the first half of the story of Sever. Yeah, that was probably the most middle school writer thing you've ever heard, wasn't it? Moving on, this was the reference for her younger sister, Mui Jitsu. I actually have, like, no idea why her main outfit was that of a shrine maiden, because, like, I don't think she even lived at a shrine, so who- <laughs> who knows? I don't know. It also sort of tickles my funny bone that I felt the need to swatch the colors on the side when, like, I was using markers and wouldn't need the exact RGB values. Like, <laughs> what was the point of that? <laughs> what? <laughs> this character was named Tomoki Seka and, like, I sort of like her design weirdly. I mean, I would draw her with, like, way better hair nowadays and probably update her fit, but the color scheme kind of goes hard, not gonna lie. Essentially, she was, like, this friend the, like, the, the token best friend character, uh, that Kasaki met after she escaped the ward, and Tomoki ran this post-apocalyptic zombie strip club that I think was called Guilty Pleasures or something like that. Oh yeah, did I, did I not mention that she's a zombie and that Kasaki's a zombie? Yeah, that's a thing, and I will not elaborate further. Okay, so this chick was named Hanatasu, and she kind of looks like the mare sheep from Zootopia, in retrospect. <laughs> She was Kasaki's good-hearted psychiatrist and surrogate mother figure, basically. And then this was her twin brother, Jiken. Yes, Jiken. Perfect naming scheme, I know. Again with the weird color swatches. <laughs> Essentially, he was this medical doctor who was doing a bunch of these sort of shady and sussy baka experiments on the children in the ward, and he and his sister owned the facility together, but Hana did not know of the shit that he was getting up to. Next, we have Sukiri Kiraima. I know, the naming. <laughs> anyway, I don't really want to get all deep into this character because really, really bad transphobia, but basically they were Kasaki's future partner later in life and a character whose design I like but whose personality and backstory is really bad and not something that I want to talk about. Okay, next we have Nara here, whose design I still kind of like. She was definitely a sort of angst deposit, and she and her brother Matake, who is also pictured here, have a really effed up story that I regret coming up with and will not repeat here because YouTube. But like, Matake's design especially I really like. So sad his personality was one note and his name was dumb. So sad. 
Now we have this character whose name I neither remember nor care to remember. I don't even remember what his personality was. Just a waste of space, honestly. This character is one that I actually still like the fur design of, but whose outfit I would definitely change because like, ew. Her original name was like Ukara or something, except I later changed it to Jimena Martinez years ago and then abandoned all of these characters. Fun stuff. This was a super old design for Kazaki's mother, Akuzure, and she was quite similar to a character that I actually have in modern day, Vortesha Zadkiel, which is kind of funny because she actually just looks like another character I have, but with a way dumber outfit. She's just an Abora Gorgon knockoff with half the personality of Tesh. Last and most certainly least, we have this little girl whose name I don't even really remember and her whole personality was just kind of the creepy little zombie girl with creepy doll stereotype, so not really all that interesting. Alright, now that you've got all the characters down, I'm just gonna rapid fire some old art again and roast the ever-loving gods out of myself. This was the first page of my attempt at the Sever comic, but I don't think I ever made a second. If you want to pause to read, feel free, but it's mostly some edgy bullcrap uh, that I don't really remember. Again, gotta love how you can clearly tell I knew nothing about Panaflow, composition, or backgrounds. Funny thing is that I still don't know how to do backgrounds. Ayo, got him! Enter the ring with some really bad concept art of the ward Kasuki lived in. All I can read is Wanabiru, and I'm not sure what the last character says because my grasp on kanji is negative 100. Gotta love how years after my Undertale failures, I remembered that I should use a ruler and yet still failed on the perspective. Like, seriously, I remember, I used a ruler for this and it still looks like absolute ass cracker. Coming at you nice and strong with even more bad ward concept art, this time of the interior. We got forgetting how to use a ruler part who's counting, Hana's old design from when she was a gazelle, and this nurse who was apparently an enderman because like look at how long their arms are like bruh. The second one features a few sketches of teen Kasaki, one of Hana, and then the evil nurse again. See, you can tell they're evil because their face mask is being worn below their nose like some sort of inconsiderate freak. Then we have this one, which I actually weirdly kind of like. The anatomy is certainly kind of whack and the lines could be cleaner, but I like the overall dynamicism of the pose and the energy. These two were actually Kasaki's imaginary friends, or like rather her schizophrenic delusions, I guess. I actually got rid of Funny Lip Man here later, but ended up redesigning Eyeball Man and naming him Miru. Here's the redesigned version of Miru that is actually kind of a vibe, don't at me. Then we got this really weird Shishoki family portrait here before I redesigned all four of them. Like, dude, why her boobs so heckin' sharp, Doug? Good to know that my thigh highs baggy sweater and Lolita fashion fixation started when I was a whole ass child. Love to know that it has not stopped. This one is actually really cute, and despite Mui and Saki standing on different levels of the page, I still kind of like this one. Don't come for me. <laughs> Finally, the last things I will show here are the human redesigns I made and then subsequently abandoned and never did anything else with. The only one I will accept is Mui. Thank you and good night. That's all I really wanted to show on the topic of Sever specifically. I have a bunch of other art that I made of them, but this section has gone on too long and I want to move on to the last stint of 2018 art that I created. This art being about Doll Eye. For those of you that don't know, Doll Eye is like this horror RPG visual novel sort of game created by the YouTuber Twisted Doctor, previously known as Sleepy Kink before their name change. They are an animator here on YouTube that I discovered as a teen and really liked. I'm not a fan of them anymore for reasons I will not get into, but as a kid I adored their characters and drew them quite often. This includes R34, which I will not share any of except for like one or two, which will both be censored. Don't worry. I will also warn you when it comes up, just I think it's funny and I want to share it, okay? <laughs> Presenting you with this one first because it's the first time I ever drew the two of them and you can tell, not just because of the poor quality but because these are Mystery and Alfred's hella old designs. Regardless of the really old designs, uh, I hope you enjoy the clear bad photo editing again. <coughs> <coughs> I just want you to know that I shipped this and I regret my entire life. Thank you, goodbye. You know, the whole Twisted Doctor phase of mine is a really good example of why you should just stick true to your own art style, kids. Don't copy people, stay true to yourself. I say this here because my drawings of Lily makes it really obvious that my art style, built off of like a more anime-like anatomy hair and eyes, did not fit well with my idol's angular, cartoony, and exaggerated style. No, no, they do not mix. 
Okay, so this drawing of pyromaniac Arthur, now redesigned and renamed to Stranger, is actually pretty neat. I mean, like, the fire itself looks kind of booty, but the lighting is pretty neat for a middle schooler with markers on mixed media paper. Just wanted to drop in and say this drawing of cow is really cute to this day. Okay, cool. Now this, children, is why you actually learn how to edit photos so that they don't turn out this god-awful. I swear my online edits just made everything so much worse, and I cannot fathom why I did them. Now here's your warning, we're getting up into NSFW territory, so if you don't want to see any of this stuff that my ch a whole ass child self made, uh, then that's understandable, just skip to this timestamp. Of course, everything will be censored, there's nothing explicit, but still, if you don't want to see it, this is what you should skip to. I can't get over how middle school me censored this cursed thing with a piece of paper. I also can't read his collar, and perhaps that is for the best. Let's get this thing off the screen as fast as humanly possible. Now, this one I actually shared on my community tab and on Twitter in meme format because it is probably one of the most distressing things that I uncovered, but here it is in full! Yay! Or rather, here it is in full, but obviously censored. I will not describe this or why I drew this or provide context. I feel like it speaks for itself, you know? However, the text beside Mago's face is a real mood. Taking this back to safe for work as soon as humanly possible, here is the last picture I ever drew of Mystery before leaving the fandom a while later. There are still some issues with it, but I really like the black and white vibes to it in all honesty. Finally, I'm going to take a look at a couple of random non doll eye related pictures to end the video off. These three are all old design ideas I had for my character, Catherine Ray. Here's her current design for a comparison. You can tell that I desperately wanted to be Vivian Medrano and design a character like Hari Menui all at once, and it just came out a right mess. Her axes are, funnily enough, rather close to their original designs I created way back then, so that's a little funky fresh. I found these two and wanted to share them as well because these two are drawings of my first ever concept for the character design of Syzygy. Back in the day, Syzygy was actually a vent sona and not a persona. I think I redesigned her in like August or September of last year and her new design has stuck since with like minor changes and she is still my persona on my channel so that's neat. As for her old design that I used for my vent sona, she was actually heavily inspired by the girl from Kikuo's Hikario. Uh, music video. If you haven't seen that, you should listen to that song. It, it slaps. Finally, I will send you all off with Danny DeBito. <laughs> uh. So there is this old meme drawing of Danny DeVito B and a friend paid me to recreate it like five bucks. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Alrighty. And that was the full deep dive and extensive look into just a little bit, just a fraction of my old art from back in middle school. Now, as I've just indicated with that last sentence, there is a lot more old art that I didn't have the time to discuss. There were a lot more pictures of my old characters from Sever, much more doll eye content, even some old school Abaddon content, and even some anime fan art that I didn't get the chance to show, as well as the cursed entity that is the Syphilis series. If a lot of people like this video, then perhaps I'll be able to make a part two at some point where I look at even more old art. Maybe even some of the physical pieces that I still have, because I still actually have some in a binder. Also, perhaps a video of me reading the Syphilis series and going more in depth? It all just kind of depends. If you'd like to see a video like that, then please tell me in the comments. With that all being said, I hope you got as much of a kick out of this video as I did making it. Thank you so much for making it to the end, even if you just skipped to this point, I guess. <laughs> uh, regardless, thank you. If you enjoyed this video, then I would greatly appreciate it if you were to leave a like and perhaps subscribe and become one of my familiars if you feel so inclined to do so. If you have any suggestions for future videos or even some constructive criticism and suggestions, I would love to see that sort of stuff down in the comments, as long as it's respectful. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you all have a nice rest of your day, and don't forget to stay magical!